Representative Sarah Palin is with us now. She has a new book out called Good Tidings and Great Joy, Protecting the Heart of Christmas. Governor, good to see you again. Good Thank morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, let me, I'll get to the book in a second. Let me start with Obamacare and the rollout issues. The president apologized at the end of the last week for not only the issues with the website, but broken promises as well. Did he say what he had to say? Yeah, what, what apology? What apology? He kind of acknowledged a bit that there is a broken website. The broken website is the least of America's worries. This broken website, I think, is symbolic of a broken administration, uh, a takeover of one-sixth of our economy, and the socialized medicine that's being crammed down our throat, that's what's broken. He apologized for the fact that he made a promise during the rollout, during the campaign for our Many, health, many, many promises. Made it over and over again, so you get to keep your existing policy. If you like it, 5% of Americans can't keep it because it doesn't meet the standards of the new health care law. If it turns out, Governor, that they end up, those 5% of people, with a better health insurance policy, do you think they'll forgive them for the broken promise? Well, where do you get this 5%? It's not 5%. It's most Americans will not be able to keep the health care policy and programs that they had desired. And the new programs that are being forced on our throat are unaffordable. People who are being told today, if you, and some of them are still being told, well, if you like that insurance policy and that coverage, you, you still will be able to keep it. It's just going to cost you a little bit more. That's the point. If it's going to cost you more, then it's not the same policy. From the Tea Party, over and over again, we're hearing the words no, defund, delay, right repeal. On. Absolutely. What are we hearing from the Tea Party in terms of an absolute realistic plan that could be an alternative and, and to Obamacare? It's not just the independent grassroots Tea Party movement saying this. It's many in the Republican but Party the plan and many from Democrats, the Tea Party? too, especially Democrats in red states that are running for re election. Who where's are the plan? Running for political cover. The plan is to allow those things that had been proposed over many years to reform a health care system in America that certainly does need more help so that there's more competition, there's less tort reform threat, there's there's less um, a trajectory of the cost increases. So you tell and me you those think... plans have been proposed over and over again. And what thwarts those plans? It's the far left. It's President Obama and his supporters who will not allow the Republicans to usher in free market patient-centered, doctor-patient relationship uh, leaks to reform health care. Let's move on. Let's talk about Chris Christie. Boy, he had a, a, a massive win in New Jersey last week. He won women, he won Hispanics, he won independents, a sizable chunk of Democrats. Mitt Romney says that Chris Christie could save the Republican Party. In the past, you have not seemed all that impressed with him. Are you changing your mind? Oh, I would never put my faith and hope in any one individual politician. Oh, please, uh, not, not any of them. Um, there is no uh, Ronald Reagan on the scene today. Uh, if he were on the scene, that's who I'd put my faith in. But no. hey, New Jersey, a blue state has a Republican governor right on beats the alternative he called the shutdown of the government and that strategy hatched by Ted Cruz and members of the Tea Party a monumental failure if you look at the results of the election isn't the message to the Tea Party that the middle ground not the far right is the most fertile ground for upcoming elections uh, you know when you stand in the middle of the road you're gonna get hit on both sides of the road we need to take a stand especially on this Obamacare and support those who are just fulfilling their campaign promise so many politicians ran for re-election and for election saying they will do anything in their power to defund the state of socialized medicine program called Obamacare. Ted Cruz, Mike Lee, some of these guys actually f were fulfilling their campaign promises and they asked for debate. That's why they stood up, they took the stand, fought for us to debate the issue of Obamacare. In your book you write something interesting about a saying that you have on your, on your kitchen cabinet. You write that, that it says, do today what others won't so you can do tomorrow what others want. Yep, yep. Now, you've been coy about whether you'll run for Senate from Alaska. It would seem if you listen to that saying, you'd want to run. Well, sometimes you do have to make sacrifices today in order to uh, progress and, and, and uh, progress those around you to um, create a better environment for all. So making sacrifices today, perhaps doing what you don't necessarily really, really want to do today, but it pays pays off in the end. I don't know if that necessarily applies to political office though because people can make a difference without a title. Without
without an office, and we're proving that. This book is not a typical Christmas book. Uh, you say that Christmas is under assault from atheists and secular liberals, and, but you also make the point that it's become way too commercialized. So is Christmas in danger of becoming extinct, oh, or not, is it too in I, our I, face? I, well, I hope you read the book, because I'm not saying it's way too commercialized. I love the commercialization of Christmas because it spreads the Christmas cheer. It's the most jolly holiday, obviously, uh, on our calendar. It's wonderful. But you but say no, it takes the heart out of Christmas. No, what I'm saying is we need to protect the heart of Christmas and not let an angry atheist armed with an attorney, a Scrooge, tell us that we can't celebrate traditional faith in America. We have a constitutionally protected right to celebrate faith, and Christmas is a part of that. And today on Veterans Day, of all days, we should be cognizant of the fact that sacrifices have been made for these freedoms. We are so appreciative, thankful for America's freedoms, and we want to protect not just that uh, spirit of Christmas, but overall our, our constitutional right to exercise our faith. Sacrifices made by your own family, I should point out. Governor, it's always nice to have you here. Thank you. It's and you're going to stick story. around. I know you're going to spend some time with Kathy Lee and Hoda. That'll a be a blast. I was going to sure. say, that'll be fun. Thank <laughs> Thank you very much.